Hi, in this video of HTML, we are actually going to cover a very important kind of tag that is a form, form tag. This form tag is actually the first step in making your website dynamic. So basically, whenever in general you design a form for taking the user input, there could be only one form tag inside a HTML page. So it is required to collect some data from the user like when a user is watching the web page he simply can't enter any text inside it so if i want to take some information i will create a form which will contain some controls inside it like text box drop down list buttons or something so depending on which kind of input you want to take you will choose your desired control when you will fill up the form and will click on the submit button. Submit button is again a one kind of control inside. So it will actually post the data to the web server. And this is where the dynamic website comes into the picture. So whenever you click on the submit button, it will submit the data. It will post the data on the back end. That is any CGI script, ASP, ASP.NET, ASP script, any PHP script could be there. All right. So basically it's just about scripting. But it, nowadays we do have something like MVC, ASP.NET, we do have a lot of advanced web server technologies. So you can use any in order to get that submitted information. So different controls are used inside a form as I just said, like depending on which kind of data you are going to take from the user, you will decide the form, you will decide the control which you want to take. Now leave about the controls but when you will put the form tag there are some very famous and important attributes that you must know about so the first attribute that a form tag has is the action attribute action basically is the location of the confirmation page like when you click on the submit button this action page is something which comes into the comes to the user to tell that okay your form is being submitted successfully so here you can actually give the url of any confirmation page that will appear in the browser as soon as your form will be submitted method is something like when you submit the data it's about whether you want to put it in the get or post get request is basically something when you make a first request for any page that is when you are getting something so that is the guest get request but when you are filling up the form you are submit, clicking on the submit button you are actually posting the data so in maximum cases we will use the post as a method so basically there are two things get when you make a first call for any form and post when you submit the data so here we will use the post and target is actually the location of the script which you want to execute as soon as the submit button is clicked so these are the attributes which will pass which we'll see while using the form attributes now as i said that for the different purposes we have the different controls so here we have text box password box in order to take the string or password you know like encrypted text checkbox radio buttons in order to take the choices if you want to take single choice you will go for radio button if you want to take multiple choices you can go for checkbox like if you want to see find the hobbies so there can be more than one hobby reading uh, cycling or something so you can use checkbox but in a situation like there is only one choice is required like the payment mode it will be either be from visa mastercard or for internet banking or whatever right you can't choose multiple payment options for a single transaction so for that you will go for radio buttons buttons there are submit button for submitting the form there is a normal button for any particular action which you can define in javascript later uh, there is a reset button which will uh, clean up the form so there are different kind of buttons drop down list if you want to get some choices the list of choices and you can select like country there is only one country in which you are living in so out of a big list you can choose your country so these are the, all the common controls that we are going to cover in this implementation. So let's start a very basic implementation of forms where we'll see the different attributes followed by the different controls. So now let's start creating a form inside this HTML document. For doing that, what I'll do inside body, I'll write a form tag 
which will definitely have a closing tag and whatever I want to put inside this form I'll start putting within these tags obviously it will contain some of the plain text along with the controls but before coming to the controls let's see what attributes I can pass along with the form tag so the first thing which I can do here is the action when I say action that means which particular page or which particular script you want to show or execute by the time this form will be submitted every form should have one submit button so whenever you will click over that it will take you to this action page so if in you are working in a website in which you are creating some of the pages and if there is any confirmation page for showing a message that the form is successfully submitted then you can pass the URL of that particular font right here now after that there is something called method means in which way you want to post this particular form to the server means there will be two options generally that will be either get or post so in get when you are making some fresh request to get some new data you will make the get request but if you are submitting the form content to the server you will go for the post so in maximum cases I will go for the method post now inside this form tag now I can start working with the different controls like here I'll start working with the text box which is actually the very common control which is used on a website so basically what I'm doing I'm just taking a couple of fields here like first name and last name and for taking the names I will use a text box which will allow a user to write any content of string type over the browser so for that I will use the input tag in which type attribute value will be text even if you will not pass any value for the type by default input tag will give you the text box control now the next thing is name or ID you can use which is used for the uniqueness of all the controls over a web page in future if you are trying to access the value of any particular control then in JavaScript you can use the methods like document dot get element by ID or document dot get element by name but we have covered that in a separate JavaScript tutorial that you can go through in tutorials point website so these are the couple of controls that I have added just now let's come to the browser to check how they're looking like so here you can see there are a couple of things like first name text box and last name text box now if you want to make some more changes out there you can definitely do that like for example max length max length means if in a database where you are submitting the value if you have uh, make a size of a particular column let's say the first name column in database is taking not more than 20 characters so what I'll do I'll make max length as 20 so that a user should not be able to enter more than 20 characters so like if I'll start entering the value so these are the 20 characters after that even if I'm pressing the keys it will not accept any kind of value similarly if you want to change the size of the particular control so for that you will set the width of it and accordingly you will be able to see how big your text box is similarly we do have one more attribute called placeholder which will give you a help text in that in your text box let's say I'll say enter first name so here you will be able to see this text alright but as soon as you will start entering something that placeholder value will go away so these are the different attributes which you can use with the text box now let's start with another control that is password so for that I have taken again a couple of fields like user ID and password which is a very common example for that so again for text box for user ID I'll use a text box alright like input type is equal to text because I want to see the user ID value but in other hand it's about password where I will accept the dots so means dots means it should not be visible to the user 
so for that it is the password so when we'll come to the browser here you can see the first value you can see but here whatever I'll write you will just be able to see the dot so this is the password again you can set the maximum length and the size of the text box that the way you were doing that in normal text box but in case you are required to take some bigger values from the user then rather than going for the text box single line text box or password obviously not uh, you can go for the text area like here there's a field called description for which I want some big entries to be done so for that what I have done there is text area control which I have used there is no input tag text area is itself a tag here rows and columns means how much height and width you want for that text area on the basis of characters so it will take 50 characters in the width that is calls and 5 rows obviously when you will increase the content there will be some scroll bars scrolling which you can read the complete content and as I said name which is used for the uniqueness of any control and later you can actually retrieve the control if you want to get the value through JavaScript so let's refresh it and here you can see there is the text box alright so now here you can see whatever I can write like this is text area alright if I'll keep writing the things the things will be wrapped alright and when I will be done with the five rows as per the size I will get the scroll bar which you can see right here so this is how you can work with the text area in order to take the bigger values from the user but if I don't want to take any text data from the user rather I want the user to choose some of the options which I want to give so for that I will use the control called checkbox so here in this particular example I am using the checkbox inside which there are a couple of options that is math and physics and I have already given the name like math and physics for the internal purpose so whenever you will require to take some value some options from the user or to give some options to the user which a user can choose make sure when you are using checkbox user can go for the multiple selections as well so here you can see maths and physics there are two checkboxes alright if you want that one checkbox should be checked by default then you can pass the attribute called checked so when you will refresh by default this math checkbox will be checked while the second one that is physics is unchecked but as I said this is checkbox and multiple selections can be made using checkboxes if you want that only one option must be selected then in that case I will go for the radio button and for that rather than input type is equal to checkbox I will use input type is equal to radio but as I said in radio button you will only be able to check the single value but that will only be possible when you will give the same name to these checkboxes alright if the name is different you will be able to select the complete radio box radio buttons reason is when you will give the same name then only both or all the radio buttons will be categorized for a single field and out of that field only one value will be able to choose so let's see here the output now there are two radio buttons and out of that only one can be selected let's say if I will change the name of any of the checkbox radio button sorry but so in that case I will be able to choose both so make sure in all the radio buttons of the same category you will pass the same name for the ensuring the single selection now if I want to give a list to the user in which I want that user should be able to choose a single value then drop down control is actually a very famous control in that sense so let's see how we can create the drop down control here and for that I will use the select tag name is drop down you can give any logical name to the control and inside that drop down 
depends how many values you want to give in the list you will pass that particular kind of option means number of option each option will actually add one element in the drop down value math here i want to see show the text as math and whichever value only one value can be selected by default so whichever is that particular value you can pass the attribute called selected so that value will be shown for by default so here you can see there is a drop down in which math is being selected by default even if i will refresh this particular page you will be able to see that again math is chosen by default so this is your drop down control now here we will find some kind of controls those are actually the buttons so basically what i'll do here i'll say input type is equal to submit input type is equal to reset and input type is equal to button as in the beginning of this form video i said that every form should have one submit button on clicking on which you will go to your action page so here is the submit button and that is how you can make it name is submit and the value means the text over the button is i want submit similarly there is a reset button if you will click over it all the controls in the field uh, on the text box will be reset means they will be blank there is button which can be used for any particular purpose like for ok or for cancel for whatever you want you can just add a button and whatever you want to do you can write the functionality in the javascript and the very same thing you can do with the image button also the only thing with the image button is you can make it fancy you can just design the kind of button you want in as an image and then you can put that over this input type is equal to image basically it will be different from that of the image image tag that img tag which we have already learned in this video but this input type is equal to image will behave like a button where you will be seeing the image so let's come to the browser and refresh it so here you will be able to see the submit reset ok and again there's a button all right now add one text box here at the top as i said for text box i can just write input because by default the input is the text box all right so now when i'll enter something i'll say re reset you can see the value is gone while when i'll submit again the value is gone but we'll consider that this time it's being sent to the server and let's say in action i have given a url for now i'm just again referring to my website tutorialspoint.com so let's refresh it here let's say continue when i will submit it here you will be able to see the tutorials point as i said like action page is something which will be there in front of a user when you will submit a page so this is how i got to know about this action page because we clicked on the submit button and the final control in the list is the uh, file upload in case you want to upload any image or document on the website then you can go for the input type is equal to file it will accept all the kinds of images so that is image slash asterisk all right so this is the mime type which i am setting for my file upload for the incoming files so let's come here in the browser let's refresh it all right so when i'll click on choose file it is just showing the image files all right if i'll say all files you can see the different kind of files but for now it is only showing me the image files and all the kind of image files because it is image slash asterisk so that's why png jpg all bikes are being displayed when you will click it open it the name of that particular image will be here and then you can add a button in which you will write some javascript code to upload that particular file and to save it on the server side so these are all the html controls that you can use along with the form control 